Hi, in this video, I'll show why the cross product of two vectors when defined as a determinant has a length that's equal to the area of the parallelogram formed by those two vectors. Now, if you define the cross product of u cross v as uv sine theta, then it's obvious that's equal to the area of the parallelogram. But if you define the cross product as a determinant, then it's not obvious why that determinant on the one hand and the area on the other hand should be equal. So that's what this video is about. It's actually inspired by a comment made in one of my other videos. So I'd like to thank my viewer for that. Okay, so I have two vectors uv in space somewhere. They're in space somewhere flying around. And now I'm gonna take u cross v. I will end up with a vector w. That vector is perpendicular to u, perpendicular to v, and supposedly has a length that's equal to this area. Remember that the cross product is defined as the determinant i, j, k, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, where the x, y, z are the coordinates of the vectors. So I'm gonna to have to prove that this determinant is equal to that area. Well, you have the U and V flying around in space like that. Who knows where the X, Y, Z axes are? So I might as well define it in a way that's easy for me. I'm going to define the origin as this point right here. I'm gonna define the X axis as the axis that goes along the direction of the u vector. I'm gonna define the xy plane as the same as this plane. And so the um, y axis will be on that plane somewhere. It's on the same plane as both the u vector and the v vector. Once I have defined my axis that way, I can redraw the picture in the new xy plane. Here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. My vector u is going to be here because that's how I defined the x-axis. v is somewhere on the same plane because that's how I defined it. And w will be sticking out of the page looking at us. And w is u cross v. Given those axes x and y, then u is equal to some x1, 0, 0. x1 is this position here. And because it's on the x-axis, then the y-coordinate and the y and the z-coordinates are 0. The vector v is on the xy plane, so it has some sort of x-coordinate, some kind of y-coordinate, and 0 on the z coordinate. So here's x2 and here's y2. Then u cos v will be the determinant i, j, k, x1, 0, 0, x2, y2, 0. I work this out, I get u cos v is equal to, first of all, I need something on the I coordinate. Well, on the I coordinate is this determinant and that's just zero minus zero. So the whole thing is zero. Minus something on the J coordinate. On the J coordinate, I have this product and that product and that's also zero. On the K coordinate, I have this determinant x1, 0, x2, y2. And that is equal to x1, y2 times k. That's the cost product of u cos v. So the length of the cost product is 
the absolute value of x1 times y2, which is the absolute value of x1 times the absolute value of y2. Let's now take a look back at this picture and see what x1 is. x1 is this length right here. x2 is no longer in the picture, so let me erase that. And y2 is this length here which is also this length there. And if I draw the parallelogram, then x1 is the base and y2 is the height of the parallelogram. Base times height. And so the whole thing is the area of parallel. QED. Well, that was fun. But before I close, let me say this. In going through this proof, which is 100% correct, there's a logical step that I sort of gloss over. And really, I should be proving that that logical step is true, but I didn't. And there's a reason why I glossed over that step and it's a pedagogical reason. If I put that in, it'll be a little bit too advanced and it'll distract from the main part of the proof. If you can figure out what that logical step that I skipped, please put it in the comments. And of course that step is true, I just didn't prove it. So if you can prove that, please put in the comments as well. Well, either way, I hope you enjoyed this part of the proof. And thanks for watching. Subscribe for more contents. Bye.